You find it tickles your brain to look at the creative maze and yeah, connect with Satori afterwards for sure to go through it. Yeah, sometime this week I'll, I'll, I'll lay out a little bit of, I guess, the beginning of the of the choose your own adventure. Oh no, I think it's like maybe self guided tour of the casinos. Letty, hey, welcome. Hello, everyone. I think I missed the whole thing because we were talking here from an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Kind of, yeah. We we. we... Mm. I was um, ranting and raving for the beginning. Mm. Uh, and then now, yeah, that's now. great. Cause I think, <laughs> but I see, I see you are like planning to to have a, a guide tour for the game. Yeah. Well. Okay. So I was um, going around, and there's this one game, or this it's a uh, what's it called? I forgot. But there's like this quiz to pick. Where are you? politically on like the factions of crypto mm -hmm. and yeah and there's this other thing that I, I was experimenting with with is like choose your own it's like choose your own adventure but it's to help develop the story so you buy like an nft to be the producer and you vote on like which direction you want the story to go and all this kind of stuff and so they have a real simple prototype where they have the story and then they have a section where you could pick what door to go through. And so I was thinking to start to begin to build the NFT self-discovery game. We do it as like a self-discovery of the casino and library. And we have the mm -hmm. three choices of process, uh, energy, and creative flow. And so mm -hmm. then, and then you, you kind of choose, okay, I'm gonna go through the process and then maybe we have the flower and we go, we go through the flower and then the I, I'm assuming now with the creative how we're we're doing the research and what Gene was saying about that kind of helps connect the dots between the the crypto and then what we're doing on the creative side of of like what, how we're thinking about NFTs how we're thinking about community how we're thinking about the psychology how we're thinking about these extra layers so that like that this library becomes living and warm <laughs> and and, uh, and alive and not just yeah. yeah it sounds really cool like if we just manage to connect the three dots like the creative flows mm -hmm. you said the uh, research and the what is the other the, the other flow the, the three process, like workflows yeah. and the processes it will be like, super cool because we have like this coherence yeah. within the group and we how do you see this like all if you are given the uh Imagine this is a game and we have been talking about all these things like the integral theory, all the archetypes and all these psychology, deep psychology things. Would you be able to self-select your role within the top five roles? The, yeah. uh, the shaman, the, do you think that uh, we can just maybe put an intro, like the introduction game and we explain each role? Yeah. Do, you, do you think everyone would be able to self-select? Uh, Personal archetype for myself, I speak to yeah. myself and I would be able to do that, but maybe we need yeah. like a you know thinking about this. Hmm. Yeah, I think that would be cool for like the next stage of like it's like the group dynamics because I see uh Jolly's Stargate, but we put the roles there and you kind of like spin it and then it has a role mm. and you can kind of explore it if you want to, or you could pick it or you could like. Coded in. Okay. <laughs> so it's like an adventure in itself. Like yeah. picking the role can be just random, or you can do it like yeah. I choose to be like the Weaver today, yeah. but it can be random. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it would be possible to, to, to link one adventure. So the things you did last yeah. week, if you. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, with a mind map, maybe. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And, mm -hmm. and so, like, that's why I want to do that, that mind map, because I could do, like, my part of, like, the shaman. So, like, if you pick the shaman, then you're gonna have like, you know, the disembodied poetics, and you're gonna have like all these kind of like detachment kind of stuff. And why is like important to kind of be like, you know, go with being detached, but the the deeper part of it is is the thinking for out thinking that kind of doing and like gut of you're confident in what you're doing, and you don't know why exactly, but you just feel this way, and you're gonna go with that. 
And that's like the shaman's like you you don't always look to the shaman but when shit hits the fan the person that everybody looks to that's the shaman <laughs> <laughs> yeah that they could be anywhere like yeah. <laughs> you never expect that to happen maybe yeah. but they it was that way <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, and then i think too what we learned is like it's all relative too because it's like relative to whoever we think the group thinks is the expert on like that particular problem uh Yeah, and then that will be like energetic connections as well. So maybe it's like what happens is really what is representative of what is the, the energies of, of the group that day or yeah. for that specific research topic or... So you could like, maybe it's like great because we can solve things that we cannot uh, well, see right now yeah. how to do it. Uh, I think generative arts possible from after each session or whatever like always we can accept any data to into that and it can generate some uh, visuals or um, music too uh, coding is also possible for music that would be our own data that generates that song like a dna of some sort yeah. but whatever we take you know as well it doesn't matter Yeah, that, that goes into like what I was saying about as we do this research, that research like the raw clay and it, it becomes like the books that we put in the library, but also becomes that creative um, stuff that we use and experiment with. And then like we do like research on it, like what you were saying um, about the song. There's even like artwork too that's like based off of one of my friends was doing that. Like you could send them like phrases or whatever and then it puts them into like this weird algorithm and it comes like this like symbol and shapes um anyways yeah letty what you're gonna say yeah yeah I'm, i'm thinking about this i see like the interconnection here and we are exploring the value of novelty and transdisciplinarity and i see like what you are saying both it's like we have these new insights about what people care about and they are like really interested in doing So we have all this warm data in the NFTs or in the roles per se, and we are creating at the same time. So I see like the connections between what energizes people and are just coding into the uh, library and this new novelty and transmedia thing. So we have like the data itself there. So we can just create this new art uh, itself with, with uh, what are the energies there. So I see like this art generating within the, the game and the library. Right, and that's the novelty of this. Yeah, you know. Oh, I'm I'm glad. Um, this is something that you said that brought me to um, Nora Benson and what you shared. And I watched a, a video of her talking about. Because in some ways, this pattern of how things are combining in gradual, unseen ways is a really important piece. Um, and in fact, life is actually happening in that way. So, so what would it look like if we had a word that was talking about this gradual unseen coalescence, um, but it was pointing more toward vitality um, than toward the danger of insidiousness. Now, just to be very clear, I, I'm pretty sure that in my thinking here, this Afani poesis word could be a way to describe this. Um, and so a possible definition of a Thani poesis could be an unseen coalescence toward vitality. But back to the word, because a word's not a word till you can taste it. We see this root uh, afanis in words like fantasy, in phantom, in, um, in diaphanous. That's a beautiful word. And of course, you know Poesis from, from Maturana and Varela's work. And so somehow what we're talking about is that it's possible to have a kind of diaphanous poetry be a prerequisite of vitality. Um, so that, that makes me feel good. I like that idea that there's diaphanous poetry is necessary. An unseen coalescence toward vitality. And and so then she goes in and she says, you know, inventing a new word and all this kind of stuff. And she gets to this part where she's like, I kind of like it because in order for you to understand this, you need to, uh, I think she said diaphragmatic 
poetics and I start laughing because I'm like, that's <laughs> exactly laugh? that's exactly what I mean by disembodied poetics. I'm like, oh, I'm glad <laughs> I got Nora Benson of all people. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's an example she gets. Like, yeah. if you are not in that context or if you don't know that piece of information, it's like you don't have the context to or the coherence yeah. to know what is going to emerge. So it's like if you are not within the uh, yeah the the world the words or the poetics or like the what is exactly happening, you don't know that. It's like you cannot make the connections. But if you have the context and the coherence, you can make like these new connections. Yeah. Maybe it's like. That's the value of what we are doing. It's not per se like creating everything, but it's have this kind of new meaning for ourselves and the connections we're trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Love it. <laughs>